Welcome to my Course 5 final project. It seems only fitting that I complete my Kotel project in the very same place where it all began, South Korea. I joined Kotel in 2013 at Seoul Foreign School and completed courses 1 through 4. I then moved back to the States and life got in the way, preventing me from completing course number 5 in the same timeline. I am now at a different school with a different role, but the bookends of Korea seem only natural. I have been teaching for 14 years and have mostly taught English and Humanities in the middle years, but this year I am the EAL coordinator for grades K through 12 and I'm teaching MYP English Language Acquisition for the first time. GSIS, Kwangi Suwon International School, has roughly 25 different nationalities, but a large portion of our students are considered English language learners. I knew that I needed to find ways to reach my new audience. The reason I chose my 7th grade boys to help with this assignment is that they fit the IB learner profile. They are risk takers. If and when they make a mistake, it doesn't deter them from doing it again. They are inquirers. They want to learn. They study hard and ask questions that force them to get better. And lastly, through this process, they are becoming effective communicators. <laughs> Take your hood off, please. Take your hood off. Okay. Okay. What is your name? Uh, my name is Henry Xie. How old are you? I'm 11 years old. <laughs> How many languages do you speak? I can speak three languages. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Okay. Okay. Can I okay, yep. Okay. What is your name? My name is Louis Yip. Uh, how old are you? I am 12 years old. <laughs> and how many languages do you speak? I speak three languages. Okay. Thank I you. I Tricycle. I First, I need to clarify some acronyms. ESL is not really used in international schools since so many students are trilingual and multilingual. EAL is English as an additional language and ELLs are English language learners. Every school has their process for English proficiency admission, but at GSIS we use the WIDA platform. WIDA is an online English proficiency test that gives a score of 6 in 4 domains, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. The test can take anywhere from 45 minutes to 2 hours and gives an immediate score. At GSIS, any student who scores below 4.0 on the test is enrolled in the EAL program. We currently have over 100 students in grades 2 through 10 identified as EAL students. The goals of this project were to determine how English language learners learn best, whether that is with technology or without. I introduced and experimented with my 7th grade ELLs that have been identified through WIDA as Phase 1 or 2. The students had various differenti differentiation strategies, scaffolding techniques, and menu boards allowing them to choose and develop their preferred learning style. For each of the criteria, there was a technology option and also a non-tech option for the students to complete and then provide feedback. They then determined which method proved to be most effective for their learning of that specific criterion and why. There are four different criteria for the MYP English Language Acquisition and I've had to find creative ways that the students learn best without getting frustrated with the language. Fortunately, my students love competition with each other and are willing to try pretty much anything. Here is an example of a vocabulary building activity that we use with antonyms, synonyms, and word meetings. This activity can also be used in any class with content-specific vocabulary as well. Play the wraparound vocabulary game, and I will demonstrate. This is a great tool that you can use with your ELL students. Pretty much actually in any class you can use this with some academic vocabulary. This is compound words that we're focusing on, and we're about to show you how this is done. I have mother. mother. Who can make a compound word with straw? I have. I have berry. Who can make a compound word with with? Each criterion followed the same format. I would introduce the non-tech option first, and the students would engage in the activity. 
After that, they would then be introduced to the technology option, and I would explain that we are still focusing on that very same criterion. After both options were presented, the students would give feedback. It would look something like this. So this is called trash or treasure. Okay, so the paragraph is, it was a cold and windy day as Miss Skidmore walked to school. She dreads the early dark mornings, signaling that the weather is changing. You go first. Mm, yeah, okay. So what is wrong with the trash pile? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, first sentence. You can put the dot here, but uh, but uh, to 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 uh, the close. Yeah. What's that called? Uh, so is that a dot or a comma? A comma. Okay. To, to the. I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Are you saying to connect the connect the, uh, words? Yeah. Okay. So you're saying it doesn't need a comma. No. Okay. But do you agree? And after ah. and and the uh, and is the the connector. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Connector. Excellent. So, Lewis, do you agree? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Lewis, second one. Um, it's kind of a hard one to find the mistake. Um, I think it's here. The uh, the early and dark dark. It, you didn't need what is it called? A hyphen. You didn't need a hyphen. Excellent. Hi, my name is Lewis. I am in seventh grade. I like the activity trash and treasure because it is kind of learning when you were playing. The difficult of the of this activity is some people when you were playing you can't learn it because you were so exciting for playing and you re um just remember the word for a second and then the next second they just forget it. We worked through three out of four criterion with this final project. For more details, you can find them on my blog post. I also want to mention where I got these awesome tools and strategies. I attended a conference led by Dr. Regina Rojas back in October, and it was such a remarkable time. She equipped us, all of us EAL teachers, with resources for days. There were toolkits, menu boards, raft examples, and even rebus reading activities. I'm so thankful for her wealth of knowledge and sharing these resources. Overall, I wasn't satisfied with my outcome in meeting the highest level on the SAMR model, so I'm carrying that forward with me after this project. How can I find ways for technology that allows for new tasks that were previously inconceivable? My takeaways from this project are twofold. My students loved learning, as you can tell from their bilingual journal entries, and risk takers are contagious. As I was doing my final project, I had many adults come and talk to me about how brave these students were. I realized that many of our teachers at the school can identify having the same experience as my students and continuing to learn even in adulthood. I asked several teachers if I could video them for my class and many were apprehensive. The librarian came up to me one day and said, Miss Skidmore, I will do your video. When I asked her what changed her mind, she said, I want to be a risk taker, just okay, like your so students. Okay, so we're talking about obstacles. What are some obstacles that you face as an English language learner? Yeah, yeah. The two big words are mm -hmm. afraid and ashamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ashamed to speak English in front of others mm -hmm. because I'm afraid of speaking wrong English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I try every day to overcome that mm. kind of shyness and fear. Mm. So doing this interview, are you overcoming a little bit of your fear? A lot, <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a little bit. I'm really nervous. <laughs>